Winches and hoists both help you move heavy stuff around, but they're not interchangeable. In our complete guide, we'll explain the difference between winches and hoist, which one to use when, and the different types. We'll also give you some tips on maintaining your winches and hoist and how to safely use them. Before we begin, we want to thank our sponsor and good friends at Jet Filter Systems. If you want to prevent retaining and seawall failure, well, how about saving money on repairs? Check out JetFilterSystem.com to learn more about their super efficient weep hold filters. Now back to the video. Generally speaking, winches are used to pull heavy objects horizontally over surfaces that are flat or slightly inclined. 45 degrees or less. Hoist, they lift heavy loads vertically over surfaces that exceed the 45 degree incline. Winches. Let's cover some key aspects of winches. Applications for winches. Winches are used in many different industries. Wherever there's a need to pull a heavy item horizontally that's not on an incline over 45 degrees. They're often used to pull vehicles out of a ditch, lift elevators, raise sails, and pull humans across the water for recreation. Types of winches. There's an impressive variety of winches on the market. However, there are seven major types of winches. Hand operated, capstan style, drum style, snubbing, hydraulic, electrical, and air pneumatic. Hand operated. The simplest winch is hand operated. It consists of a rope or cable wound around a drum and powered manually with a crank. Capstan style. Capstan style winches allow horizontal pulling at any angle and they can use any type of engine or be powered manually. They're often used in maritime operations. Drum style. There are two major types of drum style winches, single drum and double drum. With single drum winches, the line wraps around a one drum that's typically attached to a motor. The line is fed out, attached to the load and retracted back in to pull it in horizontally. This causes the line to wrap back around the drum. Double drum winches use a loop system powered by some type of motor. This can be seen in traction winches, where the two drums continually feed and retract the line between them. Although there are two drums, double drum units don't necessarily work in tandem. Snubbing. Snubbing winches do not have a crank handle. They have a spool at a 90 degree angle with tail lines to reel lines or tighten them. They're often used on smaller sailing boats. Hydraulic. Hydraulic winches are powered by pressurized hydraulic fluid. They use less energy compared to electric winches and can handle longer pulls with consistent pulling power. A major advantage is that hydraulic winches work underwater. This makes them a good choice for marine and offshore applications. Electrical. Electrical winches are powered by an electric motor plugged into an outlet or the battery of a vehicle. Now they can drain a car battery fairly quickly if powered this way, and they're best for occasional use in an emergency. Air or pneumatic. Air, also known as pneumatic winches, are powered by compressed air. They offer an environmentally friendly alternative to other types of winches. Gas, diesel. Gas and diesel winches are powered by gas or diesel fuel. Custom winches. Some jobs require a custom winch or lift system that includes winches. A great example is the Hoover Dam Bypass Project. F&M Mafco developed and installed two 50-ton high-line cableway crane systems that included several specialized winches, including in-haul, out-haul traction winches, in-haul, out-haul anchor winches, load line winches, tower luffing winches, 
two 250 horsepower hydraulic power units, Manitowoc 390 gut line tension winches. Winch gear types. There are three types of gear systems for winches. Planetary. A planetary winch gear is based on a central gear. As the central gear turns, it moves the three gears placed around it. Worm. A worm gear has a round gear that's moved by a bar-shaped gear on top of it. Worm gears do not generate as much power as planetary gears. Spur. A spur gear consists of one small and one large wheel-shaped gear. A small gear connects to the motor, and as the small gear turns, it turns the large gear, which is attached to the wheel's output axle. Winch controls. Winches can be controlled in various ways, including manually. Manual winch controls are part of the winch itself. Pendant. Winch controls can be tethered to a pendant. Remote control. Winches can be remotely controlled. Hydraulic. Winches can be controlled with hydraulics. These types of controls have the advantage of providing constant line tension. Air or pneumatic. Winches can be controlled with an air, also known as a pneumatic, control system. Key winch specs. Winch specifications vary by type, obviously. For example, when selecting the right drum winch, you'll be considering drum size. In general, you'll want to know the line pull in pounds and the line speed forward and reverse. Line speed is expressed as feet per minute or FPM. When not to use a winch. Don't use a winch to lift a heavy object that's on an incline above 45 degrees. In many cases, it's not a question of winch versus hoist, but using the correct type of winch with sufficient pulling capacity. Winch safety tips. Practice using your winch before you need it in the real world. Inspect it regularly and just prior to use. If the cable's damaged in any way, replace it. Protect your hands by wearing high quality gloves when winching. Not everyone can pull off that rope burn palm look. Keep people and pets away from the winching area. If that thing snaps, you and Fido are gonna be sorry. Don't exceed the winch's pulling capacity. The steeper the incline, the lower the pulling capacity. And stay focused on the pull. You may have done this a thousand times, but accidents can still happen. Save that beer for later. Now, before we continue, be sure to crush the like button and subscribe to receive more marine construction guides. We appreciate your support. Hoist. In this section, let's drill down on hoist and their use. Applications for hoist. Hoists are used across industries from auto shops to construction sites to mining to stage productions on Broadway. Wherever there's a need to lift a heavy item vertically, you'll find a hoist. Types of hoist. Chain hoist. Chain hoist consists of two pulleys on the same axle. It also has a mobile pulley that holds the load. Chain as a lifting line material is often used for lighter loads. A wire rope hoist. Wire rope hoist work just like a chain hoist, but a better choice for a heavier load. Galvanized wire rope can be used in harsh environments. Drum hoist. Drum hoist operates similarly to a fishing reel, just on a larger scale. Line material wraps or unwraps around a rotating drum that's spun by a power source. Drum hoist can be standalone single drum units or can also be arranged in multiple drum configurations. In multiple drum configurations, two, three, four, or more drums can be operated individually or in tandem. In multi-drum arrangements, each drum performs a specific task independent from the other drums. A simple example of a three-drum unit would be a basic lift crane. 
one hoist to raise and lower the boom, another to raise and lower the main load line, and a third hoist to raise and lower the auxiliary load or whip line. Multiple drum units are also commonly used in mooring anchor systems for various marine vessels. Each drum will have a dedicated anchor to pull in or let out to position the vessel as needed. Hoist Rating The Hoist Manufacturers Institute, or HMI, and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the ASME, provide a rating system for hoist. It's based on the following factors. Number of lifts per hour, maximum number of starts and stops per hour, average distance the load is raised and lowered, average and maximum weight to be lifted, and frequency at which the maximum weight is lifted. There are five ratings, H1 to H5, and they are as follows. H1 is infrequent handling or standby use. Loads may frequently approach capacity, but the hoist is idle for extended periods between use. H1 hoists are primarily used to install or service heavy equipment. H2, light use. For use in settings where loads are randomly distributed and infrequently handled, appropriate for average size loads and occasional maximum lift loads. H3 is standard use. Loads and use are randomly distributed, and maximum load lifting is only occasional. Running time should not exceed over 25% of the work period. Typically used in settings such as general machine shop fabricating and warehouses. H4 is heavy use. These are used in settings where total running time is 50% or less of the work period, and there's a high volume of heavy loads. Typical settings include foundries, steel warehousing, and machining. H5 is severe use. These are hoists that can handle continuous operation and the lifting of heavy material. It's important that the weight of the attachments is included in the overall lift capacity. Construction and mining operations typically use H5 rated hoist. Key hoist specs. When selecting the right hoist for your task, you'll need to consider several key specifications, including line material, lift capacity, power source, suspension type, and reach. Line material. The line material refers to the material used to lift the load, and this includes chain, wire rope, wire cable, fiber rope, strap, or webbing. In some harsh environments, Corrosion-resistant chains may be used. Lift capacity. Lift capacity is how much weight the hoist can support, typically referred to in tons. Although the calculation for lift capacity includes a large factor of safety, you should still select a hoist that is rated to handle a load larger than the heaviest load you plan to lift. There are several factors that go into determining lift capacity, such as the strength of the line material, motor capacity, and more. Power source. There are several options for powering a hoist, including manual chains and levers, or those powered by electricity, air, gas or diesel, or hydraulic motors. Suspension type. A hoist can be suspended in a variety of ways. For example, a hoist may be hooked or bolted on permanent fixtures. You can also mount the hoist on a movable stand. Other options include attaching the hoist to an overhead trolley. Reach. Reach is a combination of lift height and headroom. Lift height is the distance measured between the load hook's highest and lowest positions. Headroom is the distance between the hook attached to the load and the rail or tread upon which the hoist sits. If mounted, you measure the distance between the lifting hook and where the hoist is mounted. You need to determine if there is enough room for the hoist to operate properly. Hoist motors. There are four ways to power a hoist. Air, electricity, gas or diesel, or hydraulics. Air, also known as a pneumatic motor. Air pressure is used to power the hoist. Although they generate less power than an electric motor, there are several advantages to air-powered hoist, including 
access to electricity is not needed. There's no need to cool the motor down between cycles. No spark is created, making it safer to use. And exceeding the motor capacity causes it to stall, which reduces the risk of damage. Air hoist have simple controls. Ropes extend up to valves on the motor to operate forward and reverse movement, and a mechanical brake is used to hold the hoisted load. Electricity. Electrical hoists typically use an upper limit switch or sensor to stop motion at the top and in some models, the lower end of travel. Load limiters will keep the hoist from lifting beyond its capacity. Some electrical hoists offer dual speed operation. Electric hoists can also be controlled with a pendant or remote control. Hydraulic. Hydraulic hoists are powered by a hydraulic system. The maximum load a hydraulic hoist can lift is in part dictated by the size of the pistons. For example, a small piston generating 100 pounds of force can lift 900 pounds. Gas or diesel. Gas or diesel hoist are powered by gas or diesel fuel. Diesel powered scissor lifts are commonly used on construction sites. Unfortunately, hoist powered by gas or diesel fuels are noisy and emit fumes. They're best used outdoors or in well-ventilated areas. Safety tips. No matter which type of hoist you use, there's basic safety tips you should follow, including center the load underneath the hoist, regularly inspect the hoist, replace any parts such as chains, hooks, latches, gears, and switches that may be damaged. Regularly lubricate the chain and wire ropes per the manufacturer's instructions. Do not extend the length of the chains or wire ropes. Ensure the hook safety latch is engaged before the lift. Never, and we mean never, exceed the hoist lifting capacity. Ensure you and others are a safe distance from the load during the lift. And don't use electric hoist near flammable objects or materials. The spark an electric hoist can generate could cause a fire or an explosion. This is where a pneumatic hoist may be a better choice. Gas and diesel powered hoist should be used outdoors or in well ventilated areas where their fumes can quickly dissipate. And as always, wear appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE. Conclusion. There are many factors to consider when choosing between a winch and a hoist. Some tasks can be accomplished with either, but safety may preclude the use of one over the other. Regular inspection of your winches and hoist is critical to safety. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions for safety and maintenance of your winches and hoist. And when in doubt, your local equipment dealer can help you select the right winch or hoist for the job. Once again, we want to thank our sponsor, Jet Filter System. Check them out at jetfiltersystem.com or call 800-475-2029 to save money and prevent retaining and seawall fade. Well, that's all we have for now. And be sure and subscribe so you'll be notified whenever we release a new video guide.